Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of First Pitch. I'm your host Braxton Wheeler. Joined with me is head coach Ryan Brittle and my co-host Brandon Roberts. And we have some really special, special guests today. Coach, let's go ahead and introduce them. So today's a good daddy day for me. Kids are on spring break, so I've got Ryland here, uh, Dylan, and Cooper. This is three of my four. We have the little one, Tegan, is at home. And so uh, we get to hang out with the kids. Uh, Ryland and I are going to go fishing here in a little bit. For a little while and uh, have a good day together so just wanted to introduce these guys and great to have, have them at work all right they're gonna leave us here <laughs> and head out in the hallway for a minute while i do the show go bubba go all right so um it was good to good for everyone to see them guys and uh, anyway let's just uh jump right into it here uh we're gonna no, it's not going to be too long of a show today. Let's just recap Shenandoah. All I have written down here is just um, we lost the first game 2-1 to one and the second game 8-6. to six. Uh, it, was, it was a good weekend of celebrating, you know, the senior day and all of this and um, the, what we did afterwards with the food and, and stuff. But on the field, we just um, – we competed, but I don't think we just – we just we just fell short and simple. Yeah. We fell short both games, and it's, you'll have that sometimes. And I guess it's better to get it out of the way now with those guys. But um, coach, this weekend we uh, we didn't we didn't swing it particularly well. A lot of fly balls, lazy fly balls to the outfield. Um, Shenandoah played good. Uh, we made a we made a couple mistakes in the field that kind of hurt us a little bit, but. Uh, they were well competed games. They were uh, close ball games, two to one, eight to six, and uh, we we just couldn't bring enough to the table to come out on the right side of the of the uh, win loss record. But uh, we'll move on. Uh, played Emory and Henry yesterday and uh, came out with a 10, 10 to one victory. Drew Callahan another good day on the mound, and I know Brax has got some probably got some guys that did some things at the plate uh, yesterday. Yeah, we had. Uh uh, yeah, Drew went five innings. He got another win. I think is he seven, seven and two now. Seven he's definitely he's racking up the, the W. So he's doing a great job for us. Um, we started a little slow on offense, a little bit. We probably could have put a little more on the board early. But um, anyway, Drew, uh, Tim went four for five yesterday, and Jake Martin hit a no doubter home run, and Kyle Anstis hit a, hit a really good uh, home run as well. But um, you know, our offense it definitely it was back half of that game. We caught caught fire, and hopefully we can keep it up and. Uh, not to mention the bullpen yesterday after Drew came out. They went four innings, and um, I think all everybody that came in, nobody had walks or anything, no runs. And, um, you know, we've, we've been pitching it relatively well this we weekend. Have. We pitched it well in this week weekday games. We pitched it well as well. Um, so it was, it was good to get that win, and hopefully we can um, take it over to Randolph-Macon this weekend. So, Coach, um, you see, you, you got like almost a little mini family. You know, like you got like a mini baseball team. I meant to say. Yeah. So it's kind of nice, like having a bunch of people around all the time. And then you got to go to the baseball field, and you got another baseball team waiting for you. How do you like? What, what are some of the similarities you do that are different with your family that you do with the baseball team? Because you got so much going on. And um, I just I just do whatever my wife tells me to do. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she has to spend all day every day. Uh, with kids in her arms and around her legs and uh, so when I get home I just try to try to take a little pressure off her um, I'm actually the one at the house that uh, does all the dishes so I do the dishes or most 90% of the dishes I do at, at home just to just to help out and but uh, you know raising a family is not not a whole lot different than raising than raising a baseball team um, you have to have discipline you have to have love in there to be successful, and uh, you gotta you gotta know you gotta know who they are because each each one of my kids is is an individual and reacts differently to discipline and uh, punishment, and it's the same way with our team. Uh, you can't you really can't manage everybody the same way because they're different. They're just so different, and uh, so anyway, that's it's a there's a lot of similarities there. And it's good to have my family is part of our baseball team. I mean, they're invested in it, and our kids are around it all the time. They're on the field after the games trying to rake the field and, and put the tarps on and stuff like that. So um, it's a great way to raise a family, and, and I've really enjoyed, enjoyed having them being around and having y'all be around them. Sometimes it's good for y'all to see us coaches 
in a different setting other than baseball to see that you know we are humans and that we we have other issues that we have to deal with and and how we interact with our kids it's it's really interesting to me to see coach kent grumpy old guy interact sitting the over kids. there old broke down pitching coach in the dugout interact <laughs> with john who is coach austin's son yeah. and and my kids mm -hmm. and act like a silly Goofball silly in the weight goofball. Room. yeah building you know? the forts and everything so it's a whole another side of of the coaching staff that you see when when you have family around so it's cool yeah that's cool what, that was exactly what, what i was gonna say excuse me when um when coach said about coach ken or whatever like your your children and John John, I think it's going to be really interesting when they grow up. They're going to look back and just think about it, this place and how how much fun they had growing up here and um, just the experiences that they had around baseball and um. It's like you know, Coach it's, Faust when Tyler comes back. He, yeah. He oh, always yeah. says how much he misses it and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, certainly. So they'll they'll look back on it. It'll be mm -hmm. really 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 good memories for him. So, um, so Coach, what? It's kind of an off the wall question, but through your coaching experiences. Um, what is your best coaching memory you've ever had and uh, your worst mem coaching memory as well? The greatest coaching memories that you have um, are when, you're, when your players 10 years down the road call you back or come back. Like one of, one of my former players as an assistant at Radford University is the assistant coach at Virginia Wesleyan and John Spears. And, and for him to come back and to bring when they came, he brought his son and to see them playing b ball out on the field, out on our field, playing catch, hitting, that kind of thing. And for him, you know, he's told, told me uh, multiple times that he appreciated everything that I did for him um, when he was at Radford and Coach Ken as well, because Coach Ken was the head coach there at, this, at the time. But uh, when guys like that come back and they say, you know, thanks for what you did and, um, that's that's the most memorable moments for me, that and having my family at the field. Um, as far as the the not so great moments, typically happen off the field. You know, when you have to deal with knuckleheads getting in trouble or uh, somebody <laughs> <laughs> or somebody uh, not being happy um, or a parent not being happy with the way that you've treated their son and. And uh, so those those things that I take very seriously and and uh, try to learn from and get better at and um, on the field worst moments um, getting beat in the conference tournaments to get eliminated you know those are those are really tough times especially, uh, especially tough way. especially tough on seniors same way um, two times in a row too. yeah win the first one the yeah two yeah. so hopefully that won't happen this year. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, so, yeah and there's pros and cons with every job, and that's exactly what the coach is just talking about there. And uh, so let's let's talk about Randolph making this weekend. Certainly, we know they're a really good team. They're the nationally ranked. Um, could they go to the College World Series last year towards the end? I believe they yeah, did. Yeah, they finished in the top four. They in did the, in the World Series last I, year. I mean, look, we know they're. I mean, they've been top dogs of this conference. Uh, and uh, here we go. We look. Everything's ahead of us still. Um, control our own destiny. Uh, it's just our conference has been crazy lately, and Randolph Macon's a really good team on the, I mean in general, but on weekends for ODAC play, they're 11 and one I believe. Uh, they got two good guys they're gonna throw on the mound, and we know we're gonna be in a dog fight with them. But hey, we're ready for it. But um, talk about Macon, maybe the weather situation. Um, yeah, so there's potential that uh, we could have game change um, this weekend, or game time and game date change this weekend because of rain. Uh, tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow night in the Richmond area really all across the state of Virginia is going to get hammered with rain tomorrow thunderstorms but um, so keep your eye on the website for that making uh, making's a good good team uh, Zubovich and Roth are probably the best two arms in the conference so we'll have our work cut out for us at the plate and uh, you know they got a lineup that's full of left-handed hitters that can that can hit up and down the lineup. So our pitchers are going to have their hands full. We're probably uh, the underdogs going in and undermanned. Um, so we'll see how our team reacts. We'll see what we got inside of us to, on uh, Saturday or Sunday, mm -hmm. and see if we can uh, see if we can muster up enough energy and enthusiasm to to get a get a win or two in there at Randolph Macon. So I look forward to it. It's really uh, every weekend's a test for us 
in the ODAC and a barometer of how we're doing in, in the state of Virginia and certainly this is no different no sure. different than that. You got an idea who's starting game one? Coach? Can't give that I up. actually have no idea no. to be honest. I mean we've got we've got two pitchers that are um, that are coming one's coming off an injury and um, freak accident and a <laughs> Health and human performance <laughs> class. You got some stitches in his head and Goodness. and whatnot. But uh, and then another one that got hit in the forehead with a baseball this past weekend. That's uh, that's that's trying to come back from that too. So Joey Pride. Oh, um, oh yeah, Joey. Yeah. So he's trying to come back from that. So uh, we know Red is healthy and and ready to go if we need him. Uh, we don't know about Colby and, and Joey, so we'll just uh, show up to the ball game and figure out who's ready and run somebody out there on the mound. Somebody will do a good job. We've, uh, You know, the most amazing thing about this club, not just the pitching staff, but the position players, we've gone through our ups and downs as far as people in and out of our pitching staff this year. I mean, it's really been something to try and manage the pitching staff and have somebody ready to go every game and 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 no matter who's been out there on the mound uh us as a team we've just we've just gone we've gone ahead and the guy that's been put out there on the mound for the most part that those guys have done a good job and kept us in the game and gave us opportunities i mean red red pitched uh seven innings gave up two runs one earned against shenandoah a really good good hitting team on saturday and uh you know who who knew that was going to happen last fall. Never. So he's done a fantastic job for us, and and uh, it's really developed some depth. We have we have a pretty deep pitching staff, whether it's starting or in the bullpen. So I have no worries about that. Somebody will run out there and pitch some good innings for us, and and we'll give ourselves a chance to win. But um, we really really the the internal confidence has to come out this weekend. Mm -hmm. You know. We know that we can beat one of the top teams in the country, and we have to go out and prove it. Yeah, we're we're definitely ready for the challenge and ready to compete. And um, if Red goes out there, whoever I mean, Red's definitely goodness gracious. I mean, he stepped up and pitched really, really well. And uh, he's he's only a freshman too, so it's good. And he has great attitude, works hard, does his everything to the best of his ability. So um, I believe that is that is all I got. Do you guys have anything else? Let's turn this thing up a notch and. Uh, Finally, five conference games left, or is it? We have six games left. Five conference games yeah. in, in Southern Virginia, so, so six yeah. games left. I looked on the, the schedule, and Southern Virginia yeah. wasn't actually on the schedule. That's for weird. Next they like took it off. So, I don't know what's up with that. But yeah. Yeah. Know, anyway, that we do play schedule. Southern Virginia. Okay, well that's all I have. Um, and if you can come out and watch us play this weekend, thanks.